Today we're going to do a bunch of different kinds of bokeh. Well, maybe four or five. One of the ways to do bokeh is using drawing gum. And so I've put some on here. I have less over here because there's more sun coming through the trees over here. And then I put it on the snow on my post and wire. Synthetic squirrel hair and make the whole paper wet. These brushes hold a lot of water and are very soft and so it doesn't take too much to get it wet. And I just wet the whole entire thing. And now we're gonna lay in some color. And I'm gonna try to leave some of these lighter spots in here. I'm using some ultramarine blue and a little bit of phthalo blue. But And then over here there's less sky, so I'm putting less blue. And it's really blooming a lot, and I want it to be pretty intense because it dries lighter than it is, and then when you do bokeh, you take some of it off. And then in the snow, there's quite a bit of blue, and I'm not worrying about the post. This will just, these colors will keep running together. If I don't dry them with a dryer, they would keep running together and running together because they, because the paper is so wet. And this, I do want it to follow the trees a little bit so that you get this idea that there's pines back here. And I'll put more branches in later. Over here, it's thicker. And I've lost that sun a little bit, but that's okay. And I want some of these uh, tree-like things without a lot of detail back here. Just in place. The way that I've uh, been doing bokeh is with these. These are sponges. They're called Soft Art Sponges by Pan Pastel, and they're for use with pastels. But if you get them a little bit damp, you can make bokehs with them. You can do them with a stencil. I already have one there that just formed on its own, so I'm gonna just do that a little bit more. And this way, it stays kind of dry. You don't have to use as many tissues. So we're gonna just put them randomly around. You have to work it into the edges a little bit. One of the advantages of this is, is that you don't get water everywhere. Now when you do variegated colors like this, you automatically get different colors of bokeh. But you can put color into bokeh if you want to. Now another way to use this kind of stencil that's really fun is to just use a sponge, a regular sponge, or just use a stencil brush. And so we're going to go for that. This we're going to try it with the stencil brush. So I have it pretty wet, and you can use bigger stencil brushes. I have all different sizes, and, and there's littler ones. And this doesn't lift quite as much paint as the other sponge, so you get this softer look. And I don't like that sharp edge there, so I'm just put a big one right there. This is another one where you do have to clean your brush up. It's another way to do these, that's probably the easiest way, but I like the really round look too, is just to take your stencil brush and rub a little circle. But those are nice soft ones in the background, but they aren't quite as round. I'm gonna put some down here in these lighter spots. That's a big brush mount. It goes faster with the big one, but it's not quite as round because you get, you get a lot more water. Another way you can use these stencils is with, if you have really stained paper, like maybe right there, 
you can use some of this. This is um, Mr. Clean, the eraser, the magic eraser that has no chemicals in it. It's just an eraser. So it does break up your paper. You can just break off a piece, get a clean paper, and let's see if we can get rid of some of that. Well, I don't quite want to scrub my paper that much, but you can see that this takes more off. And it also works very well for little tiny spaces. If you want to do some of these really little ones, you can do it. So the sky's the limit. You can also do bokeh with a brush. that You, you want one that's kind of stiff. And this is great. If you don't have any of this stuff, you don't have a stencil, you don't have a sponge, most people have brushes and tissues that are watercoloring, so you just, all you need is a brush and a tissue. And you make a little circle and agitate it. Might have to do it a couple times. See, this has that blue in it. And you can use a stiffer brush. So they won't be as perfectly round, but they can still be very lovely, and I like them um, because they're a little bit not as bright. Now, if you don't have a stencil and you want these round ones, you can use all kinds of other stuff. Um, I mean, this is a, this would be a huge bokeh, but you could do it. I think I'll try one, just part of one. And you could find tape that had a smaller hole. I like this middle size sponge uh, stencil brush the best. But if you're just using stencil brushes, you know, this size, this is a little, um, let's see. Can make bigger ones that look further away. Okay, so when you have places like that where you want it a little bit whiter, you can get your bleed proof white out and put some on your palette and you want to get it from a more paste, pasty spot in the jar. Some of this is runnier than other spots. And put it on your palette. And then rub almost all of it off of the brush, which I've done that on my sponge, like this. And then you can add color to it. So you can get really white ones that way, and do, I usually dab them too so that they aren't quite so bright. Now I'm going to paint my post, and I'm going to use Rust and Ultramarine Blue, and it makes anything from gray to brown when you mix those two together. Like I said, I'm going to make this look more like wood versus the rusty post. I'm actually going to take some of my bleed proof white and, and get it on this side to get some texture into there. Before you take your frisket off, you need it to be completely dry. If you don't, it tears the paper. So since this was the most recently wet, I'm going to start up here. There are various ways that you can take frisket off. I'm just going to show you one. It's my favorite way. It's just a piece of masking tape. You hold it here with your finger, and then you rub it across, and then you go to a new spot and do it again. I make these layers of shadows in here, and, and you know, there's more than one color in here. So that got very purple. And it's all kind of bumpy. And the places that are super really white, I might even go over them with bleed proof white. And I'm just gonna keep going with this color in the different places where I see it. The next layer of shadowing. Oh, that one should have been a little bit purple.
Now down here, I'm definitely gonna want bleed proof white to make that pop. So I'm gonna put this purple into some of these medium sized ones. And then you just pat it. And once you've done that and pat it, you can just put a spot in the middle and it'll spread. So make it whatever size you want it, pat it, and then put a spot in the middle and watch it spread out. That, that was a big one, so I'm gonna help it spread a little bit. Didn't do. Okay, now I need a very clean brush, so I actually tap it at the bottom of my jar a little bit. And you don't wanna contaminate your bleed proof white. And I'm making a whole new spot on my palette away from all the other colors. And I'm just gonna go in these places where it just should be whiter at the top. And some of these little mounds, those I'll smudge a little bit. Give the idea of some crystals up there, snow crystals. That's quite black. It's a little bit better. Now these, um, with the sharp edges, you can just do this, but you have to do quite a bit of agitating, or you can even do it with one of these. And that had some blue on it from taking lifting. But another thing that you can do that's kind of fun is to add some more colors to them. I wasn't gonna introduce more purple, but I kind of want them to be purple. Once they're wet, you can add more color and it'll spread out. I'm probably gonna add some grasses to this and do a few other things to finish it off, but I think we're done showing how to do bokeh. And just in review, my favorite method was a small stencil, the medium stencil brush with a stencil of circles. My next favorite method was the magic eraser. This worked really well for the sponges. And then after that was doing the bokeh with the stencil brush, but not the actual stencil. And my least favorite is using the frisk. Let's take the tape off and see how that looks. And there we have it. <laughs>